Hi everyone, my name is Dr Karen Joyce and I'm a Senior Lecturer at James Cook University and the Education Director at SheMaps. I'm a scientist and an educator and I believe that there's a science for everyone. You just need to know where to look. And my science is all about remote sensing. And so I got into doing remote sensing because I realised that the best maps that you make with remote sensing are ones that have been field checked. And I realised that I could actually get paid to go scuba diving and snorkeling on the Great Barrier Reef to check the maps that I made with satellite data. So that's how I started. So I'm going to take you to the Great Barrier Reef. So off the coast of North East Australia, the coast of Queensland, you'll see just behind me this really big area. And so this is about the size of Italy. So it's quite a large area and it covers about 3,000 individual reefs. That's what makes up the Great Barrier Reef. So it's not just one reef, but lots and lots of small ones. And I'm going to drop all the way down to the southern end and take you into this one little reef here. So just one of 3,000. This is called Heron Reef. And this is where I've been working for the past 20 years to try to understand how much live coral we have on the Great Barrier Reef using Heron as my test site. So if you think about Heron, it kind of looks like an upside down dead rat. And the eye of the rat up there in the corner there is the island. It's about 800 metres long by 400 metres in the north-south direction, so pretty small. And the rest of it is the reef around it. And in the, in the east to west direction of the reef, it's about 11 kilometres by 4 kilometres. So actually really, really big compared to the island itself. But again, just one of 3,000. So a really small area, really. And like I said, I'm interested in finding out how much live coral we have on the Great Barrier Reef. We have a bit of a problem with satellite data because when we zoom all the way in, this is the best resolution or detail that we're able to get out of commercially available satellite data. And so it's pretty hard to see how much live coral there is. But when I look at using a drone instead, then we can zoom all the way in, we get the drone a lot closer and we actually can start to see the live coral. And even when we zoom into an individual drone image, this is what we see. And the live coral there is all those brown bits around the edge of what we call the bombies. So lots and lots of live coral tissue and some dead as well, but that's perfectly normal on a reef. We also, like I said, I love doing the field work. So we get in the water and this is what it actually looks like when we're in the water. So we see these different scales of information. And so you might think, well, you can get all this information when you're in the water. Why don't you just use in water all the time? But the issue that we have is, like I said, it's a, it's a really big area that we're interested in monitoring and we're actually really, really quite small when we think of the reef. So just behind me, you'll see one of my colleagues, he's swimming along with a bar and there's three GoPros on that bar and he's mapping what's under the water there or the coral. And as we zoom further and further out, you just see just how tiny he is as he's swimming along and I'm flying my drone nearby so I can see him. And this is on the same reef, this is still on Heron. So as I zoom out, you, can, you start to get the feel of just how big this one reef is and how impossible it would be to be under the water everywhere, even on that one reef, let alone on the entire Great Barrier Reef. So that's where remote sensing is super important and really, really useful. But ultimately what I'm trying to do is to get a photo like this, which is just one of many thousands that I've taken with my drone and work out how much live coral there is. Now, when you zoom in, you can see like what I showed you just before, but when I've got thousands of photos like this, I'm a little bit lazy and I don't want to have to do that manually. So my job is really to start to teach the computer to be able to do this and figure out what percentage of live coral we have in individual photos and then across thousands of photos and ultimately across the reef. And this is some, some of the work that one of my master's students has done to extract that live coral using Google Earth Engine and JavaScript to code this information out. And ultimately what we're trying to do with remote sensing is understand the difference in colour, really. That's the basic type of information. So if you have a look behind me, we've got some healthy coral tissue, so the brownie sort of colours, and just behind me here, bleached coral. So it's lost all its photosynthetic pigments, and that's what it needs to get its food source, right? But you can see those colours. But if we're looking at the reef 
using remote sensing, what we can do is measure those colours and that's what enables it, us to map it in the first place. Now, when we're underwater, we use a field spectrometer. So this little handheld thing that I've got here, it's measuring the amount of reflected light absorbed and absorbed light as well. And so that's telling me the colour of those corals and actually measuring it as well. But then we can put these types of instruments on drones too. So this little one that you can see over in the corner here and just fitted just underneath my drone is about the size of a matchbox, really, really small spectrometer. And it's measuring the light that's reflected and absorbed on the reef. So ultimately, this is what it looks like. It's coming up with a spectral signature. So on the x-axis, we've got wavelength of light and you can see the areas that relate to the blue, green and red or visible light that we can see with our eyes. And in the y-axis, the amount of light reflected by something. So I'm going to start with a really simple example that most people are quite familiar with. It's a tree. So mostly we think that trees are green. So if we think about the way light is reflected and absorbed by a tree, you'll see that there's this little bump just here, which is the amount of green light that's reflected. That's why we see it as green as opposed to red or blue because it's absorbing in those wavelengths of light. And that's what we're measuring when we're flying the drone over the reef as well. And so that's really simple with a tree, but you know, we can get this sort of information from the reef as well. So if I look at a coral, interestingly, we see that it has these really interesting three little bumps just here, and that's how we know that there's some live coral tissue. So that shape identifies that for us. And we can also see just here, that tells us that there's some photosynthetic pigments there because it's absorbing light for photosynthesis. That's the chlorophyll, which we have in both the corals and the trees as well. And we can use this same sort of technique to look at all different types of features on the reef as well. So for example, what does sand look like? What does beach rock look like? What does it look like in shallow water compared to deep water as well? Now, some of the other cool things that we can do with drones, we can take, take our photos directly down and then we can use this information to look at water. So not just the coral that's underneath, but the water. And I'm particularly interested in water temperature. So if we think of this photo, this was just taken actually by a GoPro on a drone. Now, if we go to the same area and use a thermal camera, so it's measuring temperature, we can see different things in the water. So we can no longer see the bottom, but we can see the temperature of the water and the wreck as well. And this is providing us information on water circulation on the reef, which is also really important, we think, for understanding patterns where coral is bleaching and not. You might have seen some three-dimensional models of trees and, and in terrestrial environments. We can do the same in shallow waters on a reef as well. This also helps us understand water circulation so we can really see that three-dimensional environment under the water there, which I think is super cool and lots of fun to do. And another project that we've been working on is counting sea cucumbers. So you can see the sand on the reef just behind me, all the really bright white stuff, but then you can see these black squiggles. They're sea cucumbers. Now sea cucumbers are important because they chew through all the sand and all the bits and pieces in the sand and, and effectively they're cleaning it through a process that we call bioturbation. Really what it's doing is pooping out the back. But what we've figured out through using drones and satellite remote sensing is that we've got many, many thousands and into the millions of these sea cucumbers across Heron Reef. And what they're doing through all their pooping that they're doing over the course of the year, they poop about the equivalent of five Eiffel Towers weight in poop. And that's really important because that circulates all the nutrients on the reef. And we can only find that sort of information out using remote sensing. So it's a really, really powerful tool for us. I'd like to finish up just quickly with a question for you and an ask because I really need your help. So I'm starting working on something that I think is really, really exciting. And what I would like to know is if you care about the environment and you're interested in maybe some of the applications that I've talked about or how drones could be used in other parts of the environment that you care about, if you have a drone or you're interested in a drone, I would like to hear from you and I would like you to come and help me with this mission that I'm on. I can't tell you too much about it, but if you're interested in the environment and in drones and especially if you have a drone for yourself, can you email me and I want to I want to get you in touch with a project that I'm working on at the moment. It's highly top secret, but if you're interested, I'd love for you to come and join me on my mission. Thanks for tuning in. 
great to see you all and I hope to hear from you soon.